take, I took one course in existential philosophy at, uh, at New York University, and uh, <coughs> on, uh, on the final, they gave me 10 questions, and uh, I couldn't answer a single one of them, you know? I left them all blank. I got 100. <laughs> Hello guys, my name is Simon, and welcome to the first episode of my new playlist on existentialism. So, let's just get it on the way. Um, cue the bumper. Cue the bumper. Cue it! So far, guys, I haven't really been talking to you about existential crises. I've all been talking at you because I haven't really defined what I mean when I say an existential crisis. Now, some of you guys have a preconceived notion about it, and that's great. That's awesome. Just stick to that and you're probably solid. So this video is actually about me defining the existential part of existential crisis. Now, the crisis part, that'll come later, just don't worry about that. So, I'll just stick to this video, one video at a time, people, please. Existentialism is a very hard term to pin down exactly, because all the people we today call existentialists either didn't know the term or they just rejected it, flat out rejection. So, so yeah, so that's not making it any easier on us, like, fuck those guys. There's a slight difference between existential philosophy and existentialism. Not in English, though, but in Danish. Well, existential thought is what this channel is all about, or is supposed to be about, because it's all about Søren Kierkegaard, the philosophy of Jean-Paul Sartre, Martin Heidegger, Albert Camus, and it's all about Karl Jaspers too, you know? Philosophers who put forth some sort of philosophical message all about people, our role in existence, and what existence is. Now, existentialism is something quite different. It's more like a, an ideology or a way of life, which people in like France in the 1940s, 50s, 60s used to live by. This video is not about the dichotomy between the existential philosophy and existentialism. That's I'll make in another video. So that's two videos, I know you already. I'm not off to a good start, guys. But when it comes to existentialism and existential philosophy, there's not really a doctrine that unifies all of them. It's more like the methodology that somewhat unifies them all. Because existential philosophy and existentialism takes man as its starting point and not nature. It studies the subject that perceives the world and not the object which just is there to be perceived. Existentialists, they pose very passionately that people are existence. I type it out for you there, because I'm not gonna pronounce it properly, I think. And existence are not just thought creators, they are initiators of actions as well. They feel, they do things. I make this video, you watch this video. You and I, we are existence. And someone like Martin Heidegger would call that a Dasein, um, but that was only his terminology that didn't really apply to all existentialists. The existence is the center of existentialism. It's this person or this entity which is really what drives everything forward. Now, in emphasizing existence in this way, existentialists pretty much say that we cannot say anything general about humankind, we can't make any deductions. All we can do is to say, and, 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 you, and you know what I'm gonna say, you, you know it. I'm just gonna give you time to figure it out. You ready? Okay. Jean-Paul Sartre said it, existence precedes essence. Yeah. Yeah, what does existence precedes essence mean? Well, it means that we cannot say anything general about humankind in their nature. We can only say something particular about a specific person. But well, Simon, why is that the case? That's silly. Well, because the existentialists take the term action and existence and put those two words together. And that means that whatever you do right now is part of your existence. And whatever you do, is actually an action. And when it comes to existence, and when it comes to actions, those are the only things that can define you as a person, according to the existentialists. Now, another proof of the fact that there's no concrete doctrine when it comes to existentialism is actually their beliefs, in plural. So, for example, Albert Camus and Jean-Paul Sartre were very avid atheists, while people like Jean Kierkegaard was a Christian. And then there's Martin Heidegger who said he was neither, and then there was Karl Jaspers who was like a weird mix of like everything. It just underlines and highlights the fact that there's no common doctrine to this. Everyone can be an existentialist, you just have to care for existence. Nailed it! Knocked it out of the park a home run! Ugh. That was weird, I need to edit that out. I won't though.
And lastly, there's a whole plethora of things when it comes to existentialists. Now, you all know that they talk about freedom and responsibility and choice, but most existentialists talk about all of those feelings that we can't really define, that we don't like to talk about at all. Now, there are the feelings of ennui, there's alienation, loneliness, despair, anxiety, basically all of the things I mentioned in my channel logo art. So basically, that's existentialism. An existential philosophy, it's really hard making a vlogging format talking about these things because they're tricky to pin down. But I hope you got a general idea of what I'm talking about. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. I hope you're gonna like the video down below. I hope you're gonna subscribe to my channel. And I hope you're gonna put down a comment talking about what do you think of existence? Is it cool? Does it suck? Are you a nihilist? Existentialist? Objectivist? Whatever is you subscribe to. Let me know, because I want to discuss with you guys. I want to know what you guys think. My name is Simon, and this has been my existential crisis on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed the video once again, guys. Take care. Cheers.